Now the first recipe is our 30 minute dinner rolls. So you're first gonna take a cup and two tablespoons of warm water. Next you're gonna mix in your yeast. So we have two tablespoons of yeast and about a fourth cup of sugar. Also into the bowl, you're gonna add a third cup of vegetable oil. Now it's time to mix it all together. Now you're just mixing until everything's well combined. Then you're gonna let it sit there for about five to 10 minutes or until your mixture becomes a little frothy. Now you're gonna mix in a half teaspoon of salt, just one egg, and then three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. Now with the flour, you're gonna add one cup at a time and then you're going to mix it together. Now once you add the three and a half cups, you are all done with your flour. Now notice the mixture is a little sticky. That's okay, that's how we want it. So I like to spray my hands with nonstick cooking spray to handle the dough, it makes it a whole lot easier. So I'm gonna lay the dough on the counter and then I'm going to cut it into 12 different pieces. So I cut it in half, then with each half I cut those in half, and then I just keep going in half until I can get my 12 pieces or 12 rolls. Now the secret to the rolls is not to roll them, but to kind of push all the extra things underneath it. So put everything underneath so it's all nice and smooth on top. Now you're gonna let these rest for about 10 minutes and while you're doing that, you're gonna preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Now once your oven is all ready to go, go ahead and cook them for 10 minutes. That's all they need. Now I love serving this with butter and honey. Mm, I love homemade rolls. The next recipe is our cranberry pecan sweet potato bake. I'm gonna start with three fourths cup of butter that's melted and I'm gonna add a third cup of brown sugar, two tablespoons of honey, and then two tablespoons of olive oil. Then go ahead and mix that all together with a whisk. This is going to be your delicious glaze. So now I'm spraying a nine by 13 pan with nonstick cooking spray. I cut up about four sweet potatoes, peeled them all, and yes, now stacking them a single layer at a time. Now in between each layer, I'm gonna add a little bit of walnuts, a little bit of craisins, or dried cranberries, and then we're just going to drizzle a little bit of that yummy sauce on. Now you're just gonna add another layer. So I'm just putting down all of the sweet potatoes. Then we'll do the same thing. You add your craisins and your walnuts, and then just another little layer of your sauce. And you're gonna continue this until all your sweet potatoes are gone. So now you're gonna bake it in the oven for 400 degrees for about 30 to 40 minutes. I actually like to go about 50 because I like them really soft. Now the next recipe is our easy green bean casserole. Now I'm going to be doubling this recipe because I want a lot for Thanksgiving. So if you want to half this recipe, you can. So I'm gonna use two cans of cream of mushroom soup, about a fourth to a half cup of milk, about two eighths of pepper, I'm kind of just eyeballing that, and then you're just going to mix it all together. When it's all nice and combined, you're ready to go. So I have a nine by 13 pan. I'm gonna spray with non-kick cooks cooking spray. Whoa, say that three times fast. Then you're going to add four cups of cut green beans. Now, if you're going to make the normal recipe, you only use two cups. Anyways, okay, I'm going to pour my mixture on top of my bean and then add about three fourths to a cup of your French fried onions. Now, this is the best part of the casserole. Don't skip that. Now you're going to mix it all together. You can do this in a bowl. I love doing it in my glass pan because it's one less thing I have to clean. Now you're going to flatten it all out and you're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes. Then when it's out, you'll pull, put a little more French fried onions on and cook it again for five to 10 more minutes. Now when it's all done, it is amazing. Now the next recipe is slow cooker stuffing. Now I usually use my Instant Pot, but slow cooker works great for this. Now you're gonna start with a cup of butter melted on the stove top. You're gonna add two cups of celery, one whole onion, and then I just did two apples. I use just whatever apples were sitting around. Any apple will work. And then you just kind of wanna simmer this until all the vegetables are soft. Now in a separate bowl, you're going to add 10 cups of stuffing. That's, you heard me right, 10. This makes a lot of stuffing. 
Then you're gonna pour on your butter vegetable mixture once they've softened a little bit. Then you're gonna add one teaspoon of poultry seasoning, about one and a half teaspoons of salt, and about a half a teaspoon of pepper. Now the next thing you're gonna add is chicken broth. We have to get that stuffing a little more liquid in it. So I do about a cup at a time and then I kind of mix it and just add slowly a cup or so at a time and keep mixing. Once all the breadcrumbs are a little bit wet, now you're gonna add two eggs that have been beaten and put it on top. This is going to make your stuffing stick together while it cooks. So go ahead and spray your slow cooker with non-stick cooking spray and you're going to dump your stuffing in. Now, if you wanna make this in the Instant Pot, go ahead and check our other video from last Sunday of how to cook Thanksgiving in, in your Instant Pot. I'm just kind of giving you different ideas if you don't have an Instant Pot or if you need to make a lot of stuffing. So you're gonna go ahead and put the lid on and you're gonna cook it on high for 45 minutes and then turn it to low for about four hours. So this is a perfect dish to make in the morning time so you can cook other things in the afternoon for Thanksgiving. Now this next recipe we have every single year, it's my mom's raspberry pretzel jello salad. Now first start by melting a half a cup of butter or margarine in the microwave. Now you're gonna add two cups of pretzels. You can crush these up if you want to. I like them to be big sticks, it's just my favorite. You go ahead and dump in your butter. You're going to add also add three tablespoons of sugar on top of your pretzels. And then go ahead and just kind of flatten them so it will make a perfect crust. You're gonna bake it at 350 degrees for seven minutes. Now while that cooks, you're gonna mix eight ounces of cream cheese, one cup of sugar, and then also one container of Cool Whip. That's an eight ounce container. And you're going to whip this all together until it is nice and smooth. This is one of my favorite toppings. I could eat it with a spoon all day. Now once it's done cooking, go ahead and pull it out of the oven and let it cool. I like to stick it in my freezer and it will cool a whole lot faster. Once it's cooled, you can add your cream cheese mixture on top and just spread it out as best that you can. It is a little tricky. You just wanna make sure that you cover all the sides that it's kind of sealed against the sides because when it, it comes time to put the jello on top, you don't want the jello mixing into the pretzels. So now I have two cups of boiling water. I'm gonna add six ounces of raspberry jello, so two three ounce boxes. Then just mix that all together until it is well combined. Now you're gonna add three cups of frozen raspberries. I like to use frozen because it helps it cool down a little bit. Then you're gonna mix this all together. It has to cool a lot before you put it on or it will melt your cream cheese. So once it's at least room temperature, you can go ahead and spoon on your Jello. Spooning on is the secret, no dumping here. Once it's done, you're gonna put this in the freezer until it's set up. Now it takes about an hour or so to set up and then you are good to go. You can add extra whipped cream on top, but I'm telling you, this is one of my favorites. Now the next recipe is cheesy bacon Brussels sprouts. You need a little bit of vegetables for Thanksgiving, so they might as well be cheesy. Now you're gonna start with one tablespoon of butter melted over your stove top. Once that's pretty melted, you're gonna add two tablespoons of flour. Now we're making a cheesy mixture right now. You're going to mix that together and let it simmer for a few minutes just to make sure it's all cooked. Next, you're gonna add one and a half cups of milk. Now you want to be stirring constantly because you don't want this to burn to the bottom of your stovetop. That's not fun. Now you're going to continue to stir this on medium heat until it thickens. Now you need two pounds of Brussels sprouts. I cheat a little bit, which is actually my favorite, and I get the steamable ones so I can steam those while I'm cooking my sauce. Okay, this is starting to thicken and bubble, and so now it's time to add the cheese. So we're going to add a fourth cup of shredded mozzarella cheese and a half cup of pepper jack, pepper jack cheese. And you're going to mix that all together. It is now becoming nice and smooth and definitely cheesy. Now I'm gonna throw in about a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of pepper. And then I have 10 strips of bacon that have been cooked. I'm going to throw those into it now. These are cut or torn, whatever works best for you. You just want this to be a delicious bacon cheese that you're going to pour on top of your Brussels sprouts. So now I put my Brussels sprouts in the nine by nine pan 
and then just poured the delicious cheese on top. Spread it out the best you can so it can try and get to all the Brussels sprouts. I added a little mozzarella on top along with any extra bacon that I've had. And then you're going to cook this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 25 minutes or until the cheese starts to brown on top. This is one of my favorites. Now, if you want something a little bit healthier, we have roasted green beans. Now you're gonna start by adding foil to the bottom of your cookie sheet, and then I washed and snipped these green beans. It's about two pounds. Then you're gonna add two tablespoons of olive oil, a tablespoon, excuse me, teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of pepper. Now so you don't rip your foil, it's easier for me to use my hand and mix the oil and all the salt and pepper together. Then go ahead and spread them out so they'll bake evenly. We're gonna cook them at 400 degrees for about 20 to 25 minutes. And I really do enjoy a little bit of a healthier dish on Thanksgiving. I know what you're thinking, macaroni and cheese is usually not a Thanksgiving dish, but my kids don't love the normal Thanksgiving dishes, so we make mac and cheese every year. And for my Instant Pot lovers, this one's for you. Okay, you're going to dump your elbow macaroni into the bottom of the Instant Pot. Then you're gonna add about four cups of chicken broth, or at least until all your noodles are touching liquid or covered by liquid. Now go ahead and put your lid on and make sure that that little knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Then you're going to push the pressure cook or manual button and it only cooks for four minutes. When it's done, you're gonna turn the knob to venting to let all that pressure out. Be careful, it might explode a little bit, so just kind of take your time if you need to. Then you're gonna mix all your noodles, break them up a little bit, and then it's time to add the rest of the ingredients. So we're gonna add four tablespoons of butter. I like to add that first and let it melt a little bit. Then we're gonna add one cup of whipping cream. This is what makes it cheesy. Two cups of sharp cheddar cheese, a half a cup of mozzarella, and a half cup of Parmesan cheese. Then go ahead and mix all the cheeses and whipping cream all together. If it's a little dry, you can always add a little more broth, but keep mixing, it, it will melt. Then we're gonna add a little bit of half teaspoon of garlic salt, a half teaspoon of parsley, and a half teaspoon of dry mustard. That is it. We're going to mix this and mix this until it is nice and creamy. And you know, this just isn't for the kids. I think the parents will enjoy it too. <laughs> okay, so I'm from Utah and Jello salad is a must. This is our five minute Jello salad and it's so easy if you're in a hurry. So you're gonna start with one three ounce box of Jello and dump it into the bottom of your bowl. Next, we're gonna add one eight ounce container of Cool Whip. Go ahead and try and get out as much as you can and we're going to whip that Jello into the Cool Whip. Now it will be a little gritty right now, but the more it sits, the more it will dissolve. Next, we're gonna have one cup of cottage cheese. You can add more if you want to, but one cup will do the trick. And you're going to mix that all together. Again, it might feel like the Jello is gritty, but just give it some time. It, it will work, don't worry. Now it's time for the toppings. I like to add strawberries and bananas. You can make this orange jello and add mandarin oranges and bananas. Or you can even add marshmallows in there. It really depends on what you want to do. Now this is my awesome strawberry cutter. It's a game changer. I got it for Christmas last year. Thank you, my dear husband. But for this recipe, I'm just gonna keep it strawberries and bananas and you're just going to gently fold everything in. Now I highly suggest making this a few hours before so that jello will dissolve and it will make it, it really is one of my favorite dishes. Now I'll go ahead and smooth everything out on the top and I'll show you my little trick to make it fancy. So you take a strawberry, you cut it little slices, you don't want to cut all the way through so it will spread. There we go, so fancy guys. And you just put it right in the middle and you can serve it just like that on Thanksgiving. Now the last recipe is Instant Pot Mashed Potatoes and you might have seen this in the last video because best way to make mashed potatoes is in the Instant Pots. All right, so my first secret of making the best creamy mashed potatoes is that you have to use russet potatoes. Now these potatoes have a lot of starch in them. The more starch you have, the creamier they're gonna be. So I'm just chopping into small pieces, or I guess bite-sized pieces, my russet potatoes, and I'm chopping about eight of them. 
If you have a lot of guests, you can get about 12 potatoes in there that will fit in the six quart Instant Pot. All right, I'm adding one cup of water over my potatoes. The lid is going on, make sure that it's sealed tight. Then you're gonna put the little knob to sealing, not venting. Push the manual button, that's my favorite button. And because the potatoes are chopped, you're going all the way up to 10 minutes. Now when your timer's over, that little L will appear on the Instant Pot. That means you can switch your knob over for a quick release or you can let it just release on its own. It will take about 20 minutes. Okay, my pressure has released. I'm gonna turn the lid and take it off. Now there are a lot of recipes where you leave the liquid in, but I'm going to dump this liquid out because I wanna add milk and just my own ingredients. Okay, so now you're gonna add three tablespoons of butter right on top of your potatoes. Now the trick is make sure your potatoes are still hot. Next you're gonna add anywhere from a fourth to a half cup of sour cream, and then one fourth cup of milk. Now it's time to season the potatoes. Now you can add more or less of whatever you want, but I like to add a half teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of pepper, and a half teaspoon of Italian seasoning. Now if you don't have any gravy to go on top of this, I would suggest adding a little more salt. But if you're using gravy, no need to. All right, so now I love to use my beaters and mix it. The trick is to mix it and make it cream together while the potatoes are still really hot. Now make sure you scrape the edges while you mix so you'll be able to get all the seasoning that's flown on the side or if there's any chunks stuck on the sides. Then just mix it one more time to make sure it's really creamy. 